Hey guys, it's Mike from El Dorado Guitars, and today I am coming at you with three different guitars, or types of guitars, <laughs> that are insanely undervalued right now, okay? So, what do I mean by undervalued? I mean that these guitars punch way above their weight class, okay? And that the price on them relative to their value is very good, right? Um, so, first let me give you an example of a guitar that is overvalued, okay? Just so that we can set up kind of what we're saying here. So a guitar to me, personally, that is overvalued is a Gibson Custom Shop R9. Totally overvalued. I think they start now at $66.99. And that's with no Murphy Lab um, aging or anything like that. And um, I just, I mean, paying $7,000 for a Les Paul is just, crazy pants, right? So um, that's an example of a guitar that is overvalued, right? Overvalued. So let's talk about three guitars that are undervalued by those same types of standards. So first let's start with the Les Paul since I just uh, bashed <laughs> Gibson's Custom Shop guitars. So this is a 2000 um, Gibson Les Paul Classic Premium Plus. These um, Gibson classics from the 90s and 2000s are insanely undervalued. They can usually be had for $2,000 or less. Um, there's a lot of them out there in really good condition. Like you can see this one is in literally almost mint condition. It's completely insane. There's barely any wear on it. Um, these guitars are great because they don't cost a lot. I think this one cost me 2100 I think. So I overpaid for this one a little because I wanted this particular color. But um, these have great 1960s um, slim taper necks on them. They're really light, okay? Like really light for a Les Paul. I think this one is 8.5 pounds. Um, the mahogany used in these is great. If you look at the back, and I know, you know, it's gonna struggle to show this on the video, but like you can see the grain of the mahogany you know, in there. I mean, it's beautiful, beautiful wood, right? I mean, look at the flame on this top, right? It's really nice. Um, you know, no pick guard hole on this one, which for me is a, is a huge plus, right? And I mean, it's got the small little tuners, just like the vintage, you know, um, just like the Les Pauls that come out of the custom shop, you know? It's even got your, I have a tuner on this, but it's even got your hand stamped, you know, logo on it. And, and these can be had for, you know, 2,000 bucks. I mean, they're insanely undervalued, right? Th these are as good or better than anything the Gibson Custom Shop is putting out right now. And um, they even have, look at this real quick, because people are gonna say, oh, it's got a new bridge. Look, it even has the, the bridge that goes right into the wood. Right, it's even got the, I forget what they call that. It's not the Nashville, it's the AP, ABP1 or whatever it is, right? Like it's even got the, the bridge that everybody wants, right? That goes into the wood, right? So it's like, these are, these are insanely undervalued compared to an, a $7,000 Gibson Custom Shop, um, you know, guitar. And, um, you know, you can just change the pickups if you want, right? Go buy a set of custom buckers if you really want it, right? They used to like hoard them. Now they just sell them on the Gibson website. You can go buy a set of custom buckers or whatever and go nuts, right? So this is the first guitar. They, these are great. This guitar sounds great. It plays great. It's resonant, you know? I mean, it, I mean, just, Plays great, sounds great, responds great, sets up great, it stays in tune, right? I mean, like, um, yeah, I, I don't see how you can get more bang for your buck out of a Gibson right now than one of these classics from the 90s or 2000s. I mean, these things are, are a great deal. Okay, so that's our first guitar that is undervalued, okay? Gibson Les Paul Classics from the 90s and 2000s, totally undervalued. In fact, all Gibson USA guitars from the 2000s, except for maybe Customs, are really undervalued. So if you see a good deal on one, grab one. Second one I wanna cover, and then I'll, I'll finish with the coup de gras. <laughs> Let's jump to the other side of the fence, okay? And talk about Fender for a minute. This is a um, 1997, I believe. This is a 1997 
Fender Big Apple Strat. Um, so my second um, type of guitar that's extremely undervalued are American Strats from the late 90s and early 2000s. Um, they are insanely undervalued. Their price has gone up a lot since before the pandemic. Before the pandemic, you could buy these for like 600 bucks. I mean, those were the golden days, right? But these are still pretty good deals. These can be had for under $1,000, right? And um, the weights on them are really generally very good. They've got cool pickups right these are seymour duncan pickups um, you can buy these in a hss um, an hh an sss um, you know i mean the neck carves on them are literally almost the same neck card fender is using now right it's a modern c right that's like point what like eight one or eight two down here and then like point eight nine up here right um, you know, the, the tuners um, are not locking, but they still have the same posts and everything. So you can just go buy the locking tuners from the Fender website, right? If you want to upgrade the locking tuners. Um, and these just sound and play great. I own what? three of these from the late 90s and early 2000s. I have two of these big Apple Strats and one other one. And just if you want a Strat, I mean, I can't imagine a world in which you get a better deal than this. They play great, they sound great. They're like tanks. I mean, they're indestructible, you know? And, um, you know, honestly, like wood was just better back at this time. You know, in the 90s, we hadn't depleted as much of the wood as we have now, you know? I mean, these guitars are all really resonant. You know, I can feel the, the you know, just gently playing it even, I can feel it resonating in the neck and um, in the bridge and in the body, right? These are just great guitars. So insanely undervalued, right? Usually these can be picked up for under a grand and they're gonna be as good or better than any modern Fender that you're gonna buy today because you know better cuts of rosewood, darker rosewood, better pickup combinations and things um, before Fender started doing shawbuckers and all kinds of weird stuff, right? Like leave humbuckers to the pros. When has Fender made a humbucker anybody gives a shit about other than the wide range, right? So, uh, and even that was made by a Gibson guy, right? So like leave, leave it to the pros. He's got Seymour Duncans, um, you know, I mean, they sound, they sound great and they're cool color combinations. I mean, look at this, this is cool. The late nineties had some really bitchin color combinations, you know, that were really cool. Okay, so that's my second one, which is um, Fender Strats from the late 90s and early 2000s, American, American ones, right? American ones. All right, third and final guitar that right now is just insanely undervalued, and I think these take the cake for me. These are so undervalued, it's wild. Um, I own four of these, and that is PRS Guitars, from the late 90s to the um, mid to late 2000s, but specifically ones that are made out of one piece of wood, okay? Now, what do I mean by that? This is the standard model, okay? This is a PRS Standard 22. Um, I had this changed, right? Um, this guitar is a 2006, okay? Um, this is an insane guitar. This guitar is as good or better than any guitars being made by anybody today, including Paul Reed Smith himself. Believe it or not, despite all the crazy crap he's selling you about, oh, we have different saddles and, you know, we put on these funny tuning keys, right, or whatever they're doing now, right? They perfected it back at this time, right? Like back at this time, they perfected the PRS guitar. And to me, I only like the ones that are made out of one piece of wood for two reasons. One, they sound better. They sound better and they play better. I know that sounds dumb, but there's something to PRS guitars that are made out of one piece of wood. I have three standards and um, one Swamp Ash special, right? And they're all just made out of one type of wood, right? Get, get a PRS that's made out of, I think it's a two-piece body, right? But that's made out of one type of wood. This is all mahogany, right? It sounds unbelievable. This guitar weighs under seven pounds with a trem. Right? Um, it's, you know, insanely light, um, insanely resonant. It sounds great. I put Lawler Imperial High Winds in it. I hate PRS pickups, always change the pickups. I've never met a PRS pickup that I like. Um, and I mean, these sound, play, feel insane. The playability on these is as good as a Sir or a Tom Anderson. I mean, the, the playability is amazing, especially if you find one like this that's in really good condition. And these can be had for like way under $2,000 now. I mean, during the pandemic, I think these were like in the low 2000s. Now these are way under 2000. These are like 1500, 1600 bucks. You can pick these up. 
Uh, they're an insane, an, an absolutely ridiculous deal. I've got my red one right here that I'll show you also, just handy. Um, this is a, another standard 22 with a stop tail. Um, this one weighs, I think, eight pounds on the dots. This one's a little, a little heavier, but this guitar sounds and plays great. I mean, look at the dark, beautiful rosewood on this thing, right? No junky cuts of rosewood. I mean, beautiful mahogany that they're using on these, right? Just like those, the Gibson, right? I mean, beautiful. And this one is almost flawless. Like, I mean, you're hard pressed to even find a scratch on this thing. And I think I got this guitar for, pff, I got it from a guitar shop actually online. And I bought it the second I saw it. I, I didn't even, I mean, like I looked at it, you know, but like, I didn't even think I just bought it because these, it was such a good deal. I think it was like $1,500 or something, 1560 or 1550 or something. Yeah, I mean, these sound great. They're resonant, they're beautiful. I've upgraded this one a little. I put Seymour Duncan um, 78s in this, which is the EVH pickup, and I added an adjustable stop tail because I, I'm a big dork for intonation. I, I like really precise intonation. And um, they sound and play great. I mean, just, I mean, they're as good or better than any custom shop guitar you're gonna buy right now. I mean, what's a new Sir? Like $4,000 Fender custom shop uh, guitars, right? Um, are, you know, I just ordered one that got, just got delivered. I ordered one in, when did I order this? 2021 or 2022? And it just got delivered um, last summer. And I think it was like $7,000, right? It was insane. I, I, I knew what I was doing with that one, right? Like I, I wanted something very specific and I got it, right? But, um, but you know, I mean, that, that is an overvalued guitar, <laughs> right? I just personally like it, but it's, it's not a good bargain, right? Um, but this is just, you know, uh, these guitars are all so great. So, uh, our three guitars are, uh, look for any Gibson, um, uh, Les Paul classics from the late 90s to the um, uh, uh, mid 2000s, I would say, like mid to late, 2006, seven, eight, right? Something around there. Um, look for Fender uh, USA made strats from like 1996 or so up until about like 2005 or six or so, 2007. Um, and then look for Paul Reed Smith guitars, um, specifically the standard model, standard 22, standard 24, uh, Swamp Ash Special is another good one, right? And you can, um, uh, you know, and you can find those for usually about 15, 16, 100 bucks, maybe 17, 1800 bucks in really nice condition. Um, you know, so those are my three guitars. If you see those, I would scoop as many of them up as you can because, I mean, compared to what you're going to pay for uh, a new USA Gibson, I mean, what's a Les Paul standard now? Like $3,200 or $3,300? Like psycho, right? It's crazy. Um, what do they charge for a new Fender uh, US Strat now? American Professional Strat is what? Like $1,699? right? Pfft, ridiculous. You can get this guitar, this, this Fender, it's going to be way better than any of those as good or better, right? For, you know, a fraction of the price, right? These, I mean, what does a new Paul Reed Smith core model cost now? What is a standard 22? They still make the standard 22? No, they don't make it. They make the custom 22, right? What does a custom 22 cost now? I have no, like $4,000 or something, right? These can be had for 15, 16, 1700 bucks, and they're as good or better than any one you're going to buy now. Um, because th they're, they're just amazing, right? So, I mean, the, the wood's better, the, the manufacturing is better. That's, you know, they were all done on the core line. I mean, these are just a bargain. So those are our three guitars. Um, if you see them, grab them. Again, this is Mike from Eldorado Guitars. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. It really does help out the channel. Thanks a lot, guys. Take it easy.